Good morning guys, welcome back to another video. Today we are filming a day in the life of an architect student. The video is going to contain information about second year in terms of modules um, and projects that I'm running at the moment. We'll be then talking about why you should choose architecture as a subject, why I decided to choose architecture and some other tips as well about the course. So sit back, relax and enjoy the video. Make sure you smash the thumbs up button, make sure to subscribe and enjoy. I'd usually kick off the day with waking up probably between 8 and 9 o'clock in the morning. This morning I woke up a little bit later just because I was tired and I did not sleep very well last night. So I decided to give myself a little lie in. I'd usually wake myself up, go straight to the shower, get myself showered, wake myself up a little bit more. And then I'd go and make some breakfast. So this morning I'm just going to have eggs and a bagel. Um, usually I'd have cereal but I've actually run out of cereal so I'm a bit gutted about that. I'm going to grab myself a coffee, a decaf coffee though, because I've come off caffeine because... Whilst I was working at the firm over summer, I drank way too much coffee. My heart absolutely racing most days, um, and I started having that heart palpitation. So I've basically completely come off caffeine, drink a decaf coffee now, as I do enjoy my coffee. That's what I'm going to be doing this morning before sitting down and doing some work. She don't know why that she love me, she say she attacks Hanging right up in my face and calling me back when I don't call her back Asking me questions like I'm gonna crack Passive aggressive whenever we chat I got the message that she was a blessing The second she said that she not coming back Memories flat Right, so now i finished my breakfast and done a little bit of work on the laptop I'm gonna talk through my first tip of the day So tip number one is kind of find yourself some time in the day Where you can do a really big block of work So a time in the day where you're not gonna be distracted And maybe when you can just go to the library, get away for a couple of hours and just get on with some work. Um, so early hours is my kind of time to get on with a good bit of work when everyone else is still asleep. Getting up in the morning for me is the best time for me to kind of get on with some work without any social media, no one to text, um, and just get on with some work in the morning. Um, so I usually give myself about three hours to do plenty of work in the morning to get that out of the way and then I'm kind of less stressed throughout the day to get work done. So yeah, that's my tip number one, um, find a time of the day where you can really crack on with some work. Right, so I'm now going to talk a bit about the course and kind of the modules throughout second year. So, throughout the whole year we have four modules. So we've got architectural theory, we've got praxis, we've got design process, and we've got technical integration. I'll briefly talk through all of them. So currently we are still going to uni on every Tuesday and Friday, so Maybe if you watched my last video, my last day in the life of architecture, I explained that. It's kind of swap round. So this year we are doing a design studio day on Tuesday. So for the whole day on Tuesday, we are basically spending it on our design module, which is the design process module. Friday, we have a lecture in the morning at 9 till 11. We then have another lecture from 11 till 1. And then for the rest of the day, from 2 o'clock onwards, we then have another three hours on the design process. So throughout the week we have obviously the full day on Tuesday, full day on Friday, and that's basically the only time that we have at university other than when we go in to do our own studies as well, which is quite a lot. Um, but because I'm living quite far away from uni now, um, it's quite a trek to get into uni. So I'm gonna try and do most of my work here this year what, rather than last year when I was explaining that I was at uni all the time. Um, I'm going to try and do most of my work here as I'm doing more computer based stuff now. Right, so architecture theory. Architecture theory is basically the theoretical positions within the field of architecture and design. Um, so with that, um, we are writing an essay. So that essay will be in for about March time. So we have quite a lot of time to be able to kind of revise for that and gain research and knowledge on that. Um, we'll be having lectures of that pretty much every week for the next, obviously up to March time. Um, so we'll be ready, really ready for that, so we don't really have to worry about that at the moment. We then have a module called Praxis, which is basically a work placement. So in January we are going on a work placement for two weeks. BCU have got connections with 150 different architect firms, so they give us the opportunity to go out and work in a firm for two weeks. 
Um, I think it's completely voluntary, so we're not getting paid for it. But some people are going international. So I know a couple of people are going to Madrid. Someone's going to India. I think someone's going to America and Netherlands or something. So it's very open to be able to go abroad um, if that's what something you want to do. Um, I'm actually just going to go back into Nottingham and work in Nottingham for two weeks because I am looking to live in Nottingham in the future. So I kind of want to build up my knowledge on the firms in Nottingham um, and kind of try out as many firms in Nottingham as possible before I kind of make a decision when I come out of uni. Um, so practice space, basically that is a two week work placement. Um, and then when we come back from the work placement, we do a um, presentation to the first years, basically talking about our experience, how we found the practice, um, any information that maybe the practice doesn't give on the website. Um, so we give that to the level fours, which they can then go on and use that to decide on their work placement the following year. Um, so that is pretty much that module. So that's a pretty small module, um, but that will be good doing a work placement for two weeks. We then got the design process. So last year, this was my basically my design module. Six projects I did last year, which is absolutely ridiculous. So we were cramming in a lot, a lot of work within a short space of time so we do probably a project within every four weeks um, so we had to do a lot of site analysis a lot of research a lot of precedent study research a lot of design work and then obviously the plans sections elevations site plans all of that within such a short space of time but this year it's very different this year we are doing only four projects so we have much longer on each project um, to kind of basically create a design that is actually going to work this year so last year was very open to your like, imagination, just create designs that you think would look good, um, but ne not necessarily that they would actually work and actually could be built. So this year is more focused on creating designs that's actually gonna be able to be built. So we have four projects this year. I've already done one project, project which was the first three weeks and that was a site analysis one. I've literally just started project two, which is like a residential um, project. So I'm kind of designing a village, um, a health, and well-being village, um, literally just down the road to so the site down the road, which is ideal for me. Um, and then I'm not sure what the other projects are about, but we've only got four projects this year. So project two, we're working on until January. So we've got literally three months to work on it, which is absolutely amazing. And then the final module we've got is technical integration, which is basically considering the integration of engineering systems within architecture. Um, and this will help kind of towards the projects as well so kind of understanding how the building will come together um, in terms of physics as well uh, making sure buildings don't fall down um, which is obviously ideal because we are architects we've got a lot of pressure on us to create a design that's obviously going to be safe um, for people to use so only four modules um, so yeah I'm now going to sit and do some work um, as I've been sat here talking to the camera for quite some time okay because it just makes you better can it break me never, hard cold is December Bet I remember everything Married to the game, I might go and get a wetter ring Just know that I grew Right, so after about half 12 every day I usually have my lunch As I usually train at about 1, I want to give myself about half an hour To kind of let my food digest before I actually go and train um, So for lunch today we're going to be having chicken, rice and salad wraps um, So very simple, just wipe the chicken in the oven for half an hour with some Nando sauce Whack the rice in the rice cooker for 15 minutes. That is going to be today's lunch. I'm going to head off to the gym, hit some deadlifts today, um, and an arm session with Tim as well. I tell no lie. I told you this forever right. Right, so we're currently on my way to the gym. Um, so this leads me to tip number two of the day, and that is kind of find a time in the day where you can literally just go and relax for a couple of hours, go somewhere to kind of get, get your head away from doing uni work for a couple of hours. So with me, Going to the gym is my time to kind of get away, get me not thinking about doing any uni work and just really focusing on my training rather than thinking about any work that needs to be done for the rest of the day or the rest of the week. So tip number two is find something or somewhere to go uh, just to relax and get yourself away from doing any uni work and thinking about uni work. Um, just to give yourself some time to yourself for a bit. On the way to the gym now, um, let's hit the edit in three, two, one.
Tim, first thing in the description, gonna head home now. Don't have much plan to be honest. Usually I'd be at uni, um, but because I'm so far away from uni and I haven't really got much work to do at the moment, I will not be going to uni today. Um, so probably gonna relax to be honest, get a little bit of work done on the computer um, as I've got a bit of work to do for tomorrow. Other than that, not really much to do, but we're gonna head home now, so I'll catch you at home. So now that I am back from the gym, um, I'm gonna have a post-workout meal. So in here we've got basically the chicken and rice that we cooked up earlier. Um, so this brings me to tip number three of the day um, and that is when it comes to budgeting and eating food and saving time is meal prepping so if you meal prep food um, say either in the morning or when you have your lunch make a load of it whack it to tubs put it in the fridge and that will save you a lot of time and it will save you a lot of effort as well and money um, so you don't have to go to the shop and buy more food um, so I've got a full dinner here post workout meal won't have to cook it up won't have to Go and buy it, and we just got it here ready for us, so it'll save us a lot of time. And then I'm going to sit down and crack on with some work. Um, so, tip number three meal prep to save time, money, so you got more time to do work and to obviously have more fun throughout the day. Another tip that I want to give out there for people that are going to university is shop at either Aldi or Lidl. So, find a shop that is really, really cheap to buy food, um, as going to Asda, Tesco, Morrison, Sainsbury's, any of them is ridiculously expensive and it will get expensive. If you're someone like me, who obviously trains and I need a lot of food, um, going somewhere like Lidl or Aldi is much, much cheaper for me. I save so much more money. Um, as last year I spent 15 pound a day in Tesco, um, whereas this year I'm spending 60 pound a week in Lidl. Uh, so find a shop near you that you can go to regularly to buy um, cheap food, rather than going to Sainsbury's, Morrison's or any of them lot because it will save you a lot of money. So yeah, find a cheap shop. Right, so I'm now just gonna chill outside for a bit because it's an absolutely beautiful day. I kind of talk through why I decided to choose architecture and kind of why you should choose architecture. Um, so every, pretty much ever since I was a young age, um, I've always been really into Lego. 
Um, so probably from about five years old onwards, um, I'd get Lego every single year for Christmas and my birthday and literally spend hours and hours and hours on end making ridiculously big models. And to be honest, from a very young age, I kind of knew that I wanted to do so in terms of construction and I knew I'd love building things, designing things, I loved drawing. Uh, when I went to school, I studied art at GCSE, absolutely loved it. My drawing skills were really good, I was really good at sketching and then obviously it would be stupid for me not to carry on that skill into A level. Um, did it at A level pretty much, couldn't get away from drawing buildings because I love drawing buildings so much. Um, and I actually did a project on buildings and trees. So I spent pretty much the whole of my A level art designing and drawing buildings. Um, my whole graphics coursework was all based around designing a leisure centre and building a leisure centre. Um, so I was kind of brought up that I was going to study architecture at university and that's something that I'd always wanted to do. The course is very um, design based, you do a lot of drawings. Um, we use digitally, so we use computer a lot to do some drawings as well. We use a lot of Photoshop, InDesign, a lot of graphics based stuff. So when we do our panels to present the work, um, it's all very graphics based. So how that you present your work on a panel to make it look good, for it to tell a story, show your journey of how you got from initial idea to your final design. And obviously when you come to present your work, your the way you present it is very, very key to showing your the work you put in so obviously you've put a lot of work in you want to show that you've put a lot of work in you want to make your work look good um, so when it comes to presenting graphic skills are very useful and I studied graphics at A level and art is obviously very handy the course is very creative um, it is definitely a course that if you are a creative person you will absolutely fly um, it's really tailor-made for people that are creative um, if you did study art that is perfect um, if you study graphics that's even better because your graphic skills that you use for when you present your work is key. Um, maths is needed, physics. Um, so if you do want to look to study architecture, I would look at studying art, uh, maybe graphics and maths, maybe physics, um, and that will get you pretty much into any uni if you do well in them subjects. So why you should study architecture. So architecture is a very diverse subject. So at, at university, there are a lot of people from different countries, different languages. Um, and to be able to spend time with them kind of people and to learn from people like that is invaluable really. It is one of the courses that, it's, there's a lot of courses that aren't as diverse as architecture. Um, it is a really diverse course and getting to learn from people like that is invaluable really. That also gives you the opportunity to travel. Um, so with architecture, obviously there's architecture all over, over the world. It's, you're not limited with where you can study architecture or where you can create a piece of architecture around the world. You can go literally anywhere. Um, so it gives you the opportunity to travel. It gives you the opportunity to practice. Um, so there is never an end answer to architecture. Um, you can always do better, do better. It's, it's never changing. It's never changing subject really. Within the course, you have a lot of contact time. So you have a lot of time to spend with tutors. Um, so it's a course that you can have a lot of one-on-one -on -one time. They'll teach you a lot of things, uh, whereas a lot of courses you don't have that time to spend with tutors. Um, and architecture is one of them courses that you kind of need that time with tutors and they do provide that. And so finally, it is a course that you will thoroughly enjoy. Um, I fully, fully enjoyed, fully. And I fully enjoyed it first year and I am doing so far in second year. My advice is try not to get too stressed out um, in first year. I got very stressed out. I shouldn't have got so stressed out um, because really first year and second year don't really matter. Just got to get through. Um, but obviously there's that personal pressure of wanting to do well. Fine. Right, so we are finishing up the day with just watching some football and doing a bit of work on the laptop. Um, so I'm currently just working on some floor plans on AutoCAD as I want to kind of get more into AutoCAD and get used to using the computer. Um, as I'm then gonna go into Revit when I get a new laptop. So yeah, that is gonna be a wrap for the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope, I hope it's been useful. Um, it's been a good video. Thank you, Ollie Marshall, for editing it up and for coming to film it with me. Um, so if you could smash the thumbs up button, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I'll see you next time.